Hi friends, hope you are fine. In the last video, we discussed about four types of cell signaling. In this video, let us understand six types of signaling molecules. Let's begin with what are signaling molecules or ligands. Cells communicate using chemical signals called ligands or signaling molecules. Suppose this is a sending cell. The sending cell releases chemicals which are called ligands or signaling molecules. A target cell has a receptor specific for this ligand. Ligand binds to the receptor on the target cell. This receptor is activated, activating many chemicals inside, leading to a cellular response like cell division, cell differentiation, cell growth, etc. by gene expression. In the case of a non-target cell, this ligand has no effect as receptor is absent in a non-target cell. Now let us see the six types of ligands. Steroid hormones, peptide hormones, neurotransmitters, gases, eicosanoids, and plant hormones. Let's begin with steroid hormones. Steroid hormones are small hydrophobic ligands or signaling molecules, which include estradiol, testosterone, all are having nuclear receptors or internal receptors either in the cytosol or nucleus. Other examples include progesterone, ectisone, which is an insect hormone, then thyroid hormone, vitamin D3, etc. The chemical nature of the ligand actually determines whether the receptor is on the cell surface or interior of the cell. Let's take estrogen as an example. Estrogen is a steroid hormone. Therefore, it can easily pass through this plasma membrane, which is made up of phospholipid bilayer. So it is having receptor on the nucleus. This receptor binds to estrogen, then moves to the nucleus, often as a dimer. Then it binds to a specific DNA region of DNA, which is called as estrogen response element and activating expression of many genes that often lead to cell division, cell growth, etc. So as you see, the structure of this receptor, it is having a DNA binding domain and a ligand binding domain. So these type of hormones or steroid hormones can directly activate gene expression as these molecules has receptor inside the cell either on the cytosol or inside the nucleus. The second type is peptide hormones and growth factors. They are small water soluble ligands. Classical example is insulin hormone which is made up of 51 amino acids which has receptor on the cell surface or external receptor. Other examples include glucagon, FSH prolactin, the neuropeptides like oxytocin, vasopressin, growth factors like epidermal growth factor, platelet derived growth factor, etc. These hormones are released in the bloodstream. On the target cell, these hormones are received by receptors present on the plasma membrane. As you see, this is a G protein coupled receptor present on the plasma membrane that receives this peptide hormone. This receptor is activated, further activating many chemicals inside, ultimately leading to a gene expression that leads to a cellular response. And we'll be discussing the stages of cell signaling or cell signal transduction in our next video in detail. Now, the third type is neurotransmitters, which are hydrophilic ligands. It includes adrenaline, noradrenaline, GABA, acetylcholine, dopamine, etc. All are having cell surface receptors or external receptors. This adrenaline and noradrenaline are responsible for our body's fight or flight response, whereas GABA is an amino acid, which is alpha aminobutyric acid. Then acetylcholine is a neurotransmitter at neuromuscular junctions. Neurotransmitters are chemical messengers released from neurons at synapses. As you see, as a result of electrical impulse in the presynaptic cell, this neurotransmitter is released from this vesicle and this released neurotransmitter is received by the receptor on the postsynaptic cell, activating this postsynaptic cell, often leading to opening of, a, of an iron channel or change in membrane potential across the membrane activating this postsynaptic cell. So, neurotransmitters has self-surface receptors or receptors on plasma membrane. 
Fourth one is nitric oxide that is involved in blood vessel dilation. These are gaseous ligands that can easily diffuse through the plasma membrane. Other example is carbon monoxide. Let us see the signaling of this nitric oxide. Acetylcholine, which is a neurotransmitter that has a receptor, a G protein linked receptor on endothelial cell. This acetylcholine binds to this G protein coupled receptor on the endothelial cell surface, activates IP3 that activates endoplasmic reticulum to release calcium ions. This release of calcium ions further activates calmodulin that activates the synthesis of nitric oxide from amino acid arginine. This synthesized nitric oxide in the endothelial cell diffuses into the smooth muscle cell, activates an enzyme, guanylyl cyclase, that converts GTP to GMP, that further activates protein kinase G, leading to muscle relaxation or dilation of blood vessels. Nitric oxide is a major paracrine signaling molecule in nervous system and also in circulatory system. Carbon monoxide gas also functions as a signaling molecule in the nervous system. And the fifth one is eicosanoids. They are actually lipids with cell surface receptors. They are local hormones or having paracrine action synthesized from arachidonic acid. Includes prostaglandin, thromboxane, leukotriene, etc. They are having cell surface receptors or external receptors. Rarely, they have nuclear receptors. Prostaglandin induces contraction of lungs and uterus and also lowers blood pressure and sodium levels. Whereas thromboxanes are vasoconstrictors and facilitate platelet aggregation. Leukotrienes are involved in inflammation along with prostaglandin that has a specific role in allergic reactions. Several treatments for asthma often aims at blocking this leukotrienes or inhibiting this leukotrienes. Eicosanoids often have receptor on the plasma membrane like this. And finally, plant hormones. Plant hormones are chemicals produced in minute quantities by plants that regulate their growth and development. Growth promoters include auxin, kiperlin and cytokinin, whereas growth inhibitors or negative growth regulators include abscisic acid and ethylene. Auxins, kiperlin and cytokinin are involved in cell division and differentiation, where these growth inhibitors are involved in ripening senescence and also to adapt to drought or stress condition. Auxin is synthesized from tryptophan, kiperlin is synthesized from kaurinoic acid, cytokinin is from AMP or it's an adenine derivative, abscisic acid from c xanthin ethylene from S-adenosyl methionine that is converted to ACC, aminocyclopropane, carboxylic acid and there are other plant hormones like jasmonic acid, salicylic acid that is involved in plant defense. So we have given a detailed video on plant hormones. You can refer that for more. Let me summarize. Six classes of signaling molecules. First one is steroid hormones like estrogen, which are hydrophobic having nuclear receptors. Peptide hormones are proteins, therefore has cell surface receptors. Whereas neurotransmitters also has cell surface receptor, Gases like nitric oxide and carbon monoxide can diffuse into the cell as eicosanoids are lipids with cell surface receptors. And finally, plant hormones that includes auxin, ethylene, etc. In the next video, we'll be discussing stages of cell signaling or signal transduction. Thank you so much for your support. You are with biologyexamsforyou.com.